Hello folks, this is Scott Grove of GroovyMusicLessons.com uh, Today I'm going to show you what are called pre-bends and um, they are exactly what they sound like um, they're when you bend a note up either a full step or a half step in this case okay, but meaning pre-bend you actually start with the note bent to the note that it's going to be. So you would actually start it a whole step up. So if you're in G, it would actually be all the way up to A to begin with. And then releasing it. Watch the whole um, idea behind this. Um, it's just a whole different way of approaching entire solos. Great for um, ballads, country, um, just so many things. Um, uh, it's just a whole new concept. If you haven't done it yet, of course, it's new. Um, if it's old to you, and if you already know everything, then what the hell are you doing sitting here trying to come to a free guitar lesson? Okay, so for all you know-it-alls, get out of here. Um, for everybody else, welcome. Uh, we're going to have some actual fun today because there's some really neat things here for everybody in every style of music. It's just the idea behind all of this. No matter whether I play it with distortion or if I play it clean, the ideas are there. Okay, so let's take a look at where we're going to be at today. Okay, I will be using the Merle Haggard Fender Telecaster Tough Dog Signature Model. This is Fender's highest end production guitar that they do out of their custom shop. Okay, and today I will be playing through, where are we going at? That amp right there, which is another Johnson, but this here's the Johnson Marquee, the Marquee 120. Um, all my Johnson amps, they're everywhere. All modeling amps, and they are just some of the most fabulous amps that you will ever 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 find you can get them for less than a um, one effects pedal for the most part and they have every effect built in them they were the first effects or the first modeling amps ever ever built and they are just so amazing um, and what I will be using with it today is just what comes with it and that is the model J8 foot controller. It, it's not a processor of any kind. It's just strictly the control board, floorboard, for the amplifier. Okay, um, the Marquee series run the J8s as do the uh, Johnson. They have a little 50 watt amp also. This one's 120 stereo. Then they've got the Marquee 60 over here I have, which is the same thing. Just half the power and in mono you can actually go stereo with it and it will deliver exactly what this amp does. Then they make the Johnson Millenniums down here. That's a 250 watt head. Got a couple 150 watt stereo amps. 75 per side. Um, just consider grabbing some of these amps. They're just amazing. Different controllers for the different ones but so when you hear any effect that I'm using it's all in the amp and all controllable right here on the ground. So, reason I'm mentioning all this is for all these pre-bends and these swells, I will be doing Okay, where a lot of you have, will have to go down here and do it this way, which sounds horrible because it destroys your tone when you move your volume back and forth. These down here or Morley Vine pedals um, keep your tone perfect all the time. You don't lose your high end like you do on guitars. So that's what I'm using when you hear these fade ends and so forth. Okay, so that explains to you what I'm doing. And so nobody asks me what kind of effects I'm using because I'm just using what's built into the amplifiers. Okay, so again, let's go to straight old clean sound. Okay, now what 
what this whole thing is based on. Okay, let's just do it off of a common bar chord for the moment. Okay? We'll just go with the G bar chord. Okay, so you all know the G bar chord. Now, we're going to have to learn for those who are not as advanced as others. That's why you're here, to learn. Um, if you're already way advanced, then, hey, skip ahead. There's a little bar down there. Um, I want you to practice on taking each and every note. So all six notes from the bar chord and practice bending them to exactly the right place. All of these will be bent upward. What's called a whole step or two frets. Except for on the G string. That will only be half a step. And I'm bending that one down towards the floor. And um, you'll want to also, because you ran out of room, from the G string and the D string. Whole step. A string and the G string. Everything's bent towards the floor. Your first ones up in the air. B string. G string could go either way or down. Why do I have to do it down on the others? Because you would run out of. You can do it both ways on the D string, whatever works for you. But on the next one, you run out of neck. <laughs> of course you will here. Okay, so that's why you have to go down. Okay, so you have to get the bends correct first before we can start doing pre-bending. Okay, so simply on your own time, work on getting those. So all of them are two frets or a whole step ahead. Except for this one. And then. So practice on getting those exactly right. Then half step. Half, now whole step. Remember, everything except for the G string is a whole step. A string. Always check it. That's the best way to practice. Make sure you hear it. You're going to have to get the feel of the tension, which is especially high when you're playing way up here on the neck, you know, way, way down this area. When you're up here, everything is so much easier, and we'll get there, okay? But especially on this high E string, if you need to, use three fingers or something to help with the bend instead of one finger trying to dang near scrape off all of your skin to make it happen. strings are easy but the high E and B string are hard okay once you get that feel um, after about a half hour of messing with just getting that right then I want you to go ahead and start with the pre bends so get them already up to that note so you pre bend it and it should be right there and then just release it to where it should be. And do that on all of them. Is that right? No, I'm past it. And then work on it that way. Go and work on a pre-bend. Hit it. Release it. Now, the half step from here is just... Then here step again, whole step, and 
if you have a way of doing a volume thing, this will help your solos and your creativity so, so, so much more than if you don't have it. Um, I'd say it helps about 80% more to have some sort of control so you can shut your volume completely off and swell into it. If it involves doing your pinky thing and you refuse to do something on the floor, um, you stubborn ass, <laughs> do something right, okay? <laughs> um, so, here it is. Okay, so those are the pre-bends. Now there are more to be had. Okay, what are these all used for? That you can use them anywhere that there is a G chord going on at the time. Okay, say something is just going by nice and slow and parody. Let me go to the next batch. So you got all that going on? coming in. It's sneaking in the root notes and the fifth. Okay, the third is kind of iffy, but it's usable. Okay. That's the note that I'm actually changing. effects everywhere because I'm just showing you just how pretty that can be. Now of course take this whole thing up where it's nice and easy I'll get rid of the effects. Take it up an octave higher. Okay so way up here. Whole bar chord. Nice and easy. It's easy to overshoot them now because the strings are so much easier to bend. working on those. Okay, so you're back into pretty mode again. So you can get way up there, you can put in the distortion thing. And you have the Yet. I know, I'm working up to them. Okay, so here they come. Okay, so you have those notes, go off and work on them. Pre bend. Okay, volume pedal. You can hear them with my guitar acoustically before I use the volume pedal. Now the rest of them are going to be all over the place. Okay, because there are more places to go. So while we're right here on screen, you have your G here, which you're doing already. You can go up to here and bend right up to the fifth. Okay, so. Or you can go, okay, so this is just bending up. Because you don't want to stay here in the second. You want to go up to the third. Okay, now you can do a pre-bend from up there. 
Okay, so you got two of them. And if you go way up here, which is this note, you can even go, okay, the rest of your scale, which I will show you actually here in a second. Okay, this actually follows, while we're here, a D-shaped chord. Once you get uh, here, you go up a whole step, then up one more step. Now you can actually play the D-shaped chord and have the G chord there. And you can bend those. Whole step. So it's just the shape of the D chord. First one of that shape. Or whole step again and whole step again. Okay, so pre-bends. Okay, so that same as going. But just doing them around a D shape, such as that. Okay, so um, you'll have many more places to mess around with these. Anything that's in the scale. So you have. Okay, so if you come down off of the G shape or the bar chord, then you can come down. To the third or fifteenth fret to the note you just came off of, and then back half a step, and then you just go to the one you just came from. So you look at it, you bend it a half step or one fret, and then you rest there because it's actually G. If you're actually playing a regular G chord, it would be this, then that. So you could actually, okay, for you listening. And if you're doing a pre bend, it's just nice, even without a volume pedal. It's just a nice sounding note to come to an end. Or if you want to do this one, the first one, then the next one under it, you can actually do it this way. Then have your B string already pre-bent. Okay, so you hit your E string, 15th fret. Now pre-bend your B string. I used two other buddies back here to help me do it. Okay, you can you can pre-bend a few of them if you want to, but there's just all kinds of stuff you can do with it. Okay, so more than what I'm showing you, what am I doing? half step, but I did, that means I can go to here and bend, or I can do a pre-bend. everywhere so just if you're going down in a scale look at what you did before did you go down so you go half step so you would know just bend it half a step then you're going down a whole step, so bend it a whole step. Then you're going down here, bend it a whole step. Then we're going to go to here, so that's a whole step. Then we're going to go to here, so we only do half step. Whole step. And finally, whole step. 
Okay, so I know that's a lot of stuff to have to chew on, but these are very useful. Okay, right now everything sounds country, which is fine. It's all just guitar playing. Um, how do you use this in rock? You put distortion on it. <laughs> it's, it's no different. You just put distortion on it. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Hey. I have distortion. What do you know? all the time if you don't want to use them that's swell too but it's just actually getting to know your guitar and the way just another way of getting to know your way around the neck more than anything okay so again same stuff okay without any swells just with the pre-bends See what I mean? Um, so all the way up the whole guitar in any chord shape. Okay. Look at the A. Okay. So you've got the A. Okay. Think about it beforehand. You've got the open A. Where do you have? How can you bend anything? Well, you can do the open A, but you can't bend it unless you go over the nut. always cool. How do you think they did beginning of Iron Man? You know, Sabbath. You know, they're just like... And get a couple notes. You know, getting stuff like that. People didn't have any way to... You know, they would grab it back here, hell. But... Um, think of different ways if you're an A to get a bend. Instead of doing it back here if you don't want to, grab it here. Okay. You have that one too. So you're starting with a pre bend. Then let off. Okay, then you have the rest of the notes. Okay. Now, in this, everything changes, because if you know your scale... Okay, so you just bend to the notes, but you're coming off any way you need to. Again, practice. Then... scales using the bends they will come in handy so much as you apply them in different things you will be looking for different ways and you're playing along in a okay so you come in from a, another note You don't always want to come in just from... 
Okay, come in from somewhere in the stratosphere, but start with it bent. And then you can start not at it and making it sound so country. I'm, you know, I am a country guy, so country just oozes all over everything I do. But um, let's do the Ace Frehley licks. I am a major kiss nut, as you could tell by the t shirt and every guitar I own in here. But. That's another just example of a pre bend. It's already bent up to this note. You're starting there. And then bend, releasing it is all you're doing. Or So you're not always just going. Okay, just go play it backward. So you start with the bends. Okay, so it's just pre-bends. Those are all pre-bends in A. Okay, so they all start with being bent up a whole step from somewhere. Then pull off. Then Pre-bend, pull off, now it's just an octave. Pre-bend, pull off, now we're just doing the fifth. Pre-bend, pull off, pre-bend, pull off, pre-bend, then. Okay, so you really get going and it sounds great. And throw some delay in here. Okay. Uh, um, let's put some more fun in. possibly imagine again for less than the price of one pedal for that amp I paid $123 on eBay free shipping 212 inches and uh, 120 watts RMS power got my pedal board got everything and it just kills any amp on the market okay so quit letting these things go by I can't own them all but <laughs> I will be doing reviews on all the different Johnson amps soon but for people who aren't buying these you are out of your flippin' mind. Not the new stuff. These Johnsons are long extinct since about um, 2002. 2002 is when they became extinct. But so now, instead of 2000 and some dollars, you get them for 100 bucks. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Okay, and like I said, I will be doing reviews on these this week on all the diff all the different models. I've got all of them. Okay, so. More things to do with the um, pre-bends. Um, I'm going back clean again, just so you can understand what the guitar is doing. You can put all the effects on there you want. Um, it's just, again, um, and yes, it has a volume pedal. Sorry, but yeah, um, while, we're, while I'm here, that always acts as a volume pedal, and it stays volume wherever you want it. If you go from this patch and you go down to this one it doesn't reset it. So if you can go to any patch you want and the volume will stay the same so no matter where you want to put this when you go to the next patch it's not like it's going to jump up the volume like most amps do. These people solved it long ago. So I'm playing along. Now I go to clean. It's the same, okay, until I want to give it more or go down to nothing. That's all pre 
bending stuff. But also, guess what? Yeah, also built in. <laughs> Don't matter if you're on the clean patch, go to the distortion patches, whatever, any patch you're on. So you always have a volume pedal for every patch. It's just a beautiful thing. Um, never have any better amps ever been made. Um, yeah, these totally smoke any tube amps ever made. They sound way better. Okay, back to guitar lessons. Yes, I sold every tube amp ever to buy these amps because they are that good. And you don't have to buy effects because these are the highest quality effects you can get. The S-Disc processing. Um, <laughs> so don't ever believe all the horrible, horrible, horrible Line 6 stuff. Don't base modeling technology on those. Those are like the worst modeling apps you can ever buy. These are the first and the best. Okay. Um, and yes, I will sell you this. On, or try to sell you on this until you die or get sick of me and go to somebody else to learn from. But um, I believe so much in the Johnson apps that I'm going to talk about them every single video. Because trust me, I've tried every amp I've owned every amp these kill them okay more stuff with pre-bends um, for you country fans I have shown this lick before but for people who are fans of learning guitar and who want to perfect this kind of technique okay this is a great lick that gives you a great insight into pre-bends Okay, this is simply coming from the 5 down to the 1. Those who don't know what I'm talking about, it's the Nashville number system. It just means simply your song is in A, so that's the 1. D is your 4 chord, and E is your 5 chord. Okay, so 5 is E, 4 is D, 3, which is going to be minor of course, if you know your... Um, theory, which is going to be C sharp minor, your two is going to be B minor, back to one. Okay, so at the, when a song is coming back around or doing a turnaround, as called in country music, it's not going to hurt anybody to learn the language of guitar in any style of music. So in country, this is called a turnaround when you go from five, four, three, two, one. Your three and your twos are 95% of the time going to be a minor chord. It's just the way country music works. Take it to the one. So the song is in A. I know, boring, huh? For some of us, the four. Back to the one. Now when we go to the five, I'm going to go five, four, three, minor, two, minor. Five, four, three, minor. Now, to use a pre bend what I'm going to do is the E, D, C sharp minor, B minor, A, but using pre bends Okay, just to show this real quick, we're going 14 and 14. You can see which fingers I'm using, A and D strings. So we're going to use these three strings, A, D, and G, for the entire thing. Okay, so you get 14, 14, and then you go to 11, and you start with it pre-bent a whole step. Okay, so you go 5th string, 4th string, 3rd string, pre-bent. 
fourth string, fifth string. Then when you move it down a whole step, everything down two frets, you're at 12, 12, and 9. Then you actually just start with the pre band. Then string, your D string, A string. So you got. Keep your first finger here at the ninth fret. Now for your B, or sorry, your sheet C sharp minor, you only move these two back to the eleventh fret. Take the whole thing down a whole step, so you're at 9, 9, and 7. Pre-bend already. Again, hit the G string first. Release. So, so far, everything you do, these are the only two times you hit the A and then D string. Then pre-bend, release, then D string, A string, then down a whole step. Hit the pre-bend, then, then pre-bend, whole step, pre-bend. Now that we actually get to A, hit the, just like the beginning, A string, D string, G string, up, and release again. string again. And then bend it back up. You can put the finger on the B string fifth fret if you want. It's a heck of a bend, okay? you how to do pre-bends. Of course you do it in any key you want. Okay. Okay, even if you're doing the old country bend that you normally go do it with a pre-band and release it and then come back at it okay for all you country fans it's just kind of neat to have it see it adds flavor instead of just going Pre-bends do make a difference. Okay, so that's basically it. Use it in any way you want to. I just wanted to open your uh, mind up to the just the whole concept of pre-bending. Again, try to do every string and look at it as you're going down the scale. So on the B string. So go. Okay. Try to find it. The next one's gonna be here. The next one's gonna be a whole step. The next one's gonna be a whole step. The next one's a half step. The next one's a whole step. The next the last one's a whole step. So try to do that in every key, every everything till it becomes natural like everything else that you play. So again, the E scale. to play them all backwards on one string or all the strings you can do them here um. okay like I said that low E string is so easy to bend way up <laughs> okay so once again Scott Grove groovy music lessons dot com um, 
you guys come by and get some free lessons, uh, there's a link. You might have to hit the show more button underneath of this video, but come by, get all the free lessons you want. There are a couple hundred of hours of free lessons and plenty of paid lessons. You know, I gotta keep the lights on here at the house. So I hope you enjoyed the uh, look into the pre lessons for those of you, or the pre bends, the pre lessons, <laughs> the pre bend lessons for those of you who have not really worked on that yet. And again, for you rockers or any other style, it's a very important part of playing to have. And you've probably done it, you just weren't aware of it. Maybe, hopefully now you'll pay some more attention and put some more time into this particular um, little bitty inflection that you can incorporate into your playing. Again, you put too much of it in there like anything else it's going to get so monotonous and um, just like a new toy you always overuse it but as time goes on it will become a part of your playing and if it only becomes one note in your solo that might be the one note that just sounds the greatest all of a sudden at the end of a song you got that G chord ringing somewhere and you can just Okay, so I used the D note, started with it up at E, so it's a 6 down to a 5 of the G chord. So you don't pick the root note all the time, just pick your moments, and it's just nice to, like I said, it could be that one note that just makes everybody go, oh yeah, you know, you know it when you first hear a certain song, it's like within the first note you know the song, sometimes it's these, sometimes it's something totally different. Uh, sometimes it's horrible. <laughs> okay, how to do that with some bands. Do a country. <laughs> okay. Uh, slash Twitty. Ooh, just imagine if Johnny had it. Johnny Cash had him. <laughs> well, Slash Cash. <laughs> oh, that would be too funny. <laughs> I hear that train a coming, it's a coming around the bend. I ain't seen some time since I don't know when, and I was looking for some prison. The time keeps dragging on. <laughs> okay, I will quit while I'm so far behind. Again, come come to GroovyMusicLessons.com. Come hang out with me and all my boring old lessons, but uh, somewhere you'll find something you can use or somebody you can use. And again, the Merle Haggard Telecaster called the Tough Dog. If you enjoy this and you're into neck through things, look at that puppy. Isn't that pretty? Um, it's just groovy as it gets. Um, go check out those. You got a pretty chihuahua on there. And you even get Merle Haggard autograph. <laughs> okay, so work with the pre bends. Get really good at them before you unveil them on stage, of course. But they will enhance your playing like anything else. It's just another idea that if you practice on it, it will become second nature like everything else. So, you guys have fun and. Happy bending, and this is my ending. Wow, what a rhyme. I should go into show business. Take care. Bye. <laughs>